So here I'm going to talk about the electrophilic addition reaction, talk about the mechanism of it. So uh, just before talking about a mechanism, just like to define a curly arrow. Now a curly arrow is movement of two electrons. So if we can imagine that in a covalent bond here between A and B, we've got two shared electrons. So that is the covalent bond, those two electrons. Imagine that bond breaking so that the two electrons move on to B. And there they are, those two electrons still associated with B and A has no electrons. Now we can represent that with a curly arrow. And here we've got A with its bond to B. And that curly arrow here means that those two electrons in the bond move on to B. So here's the two products with A and B no longer bonded. Note that B, I've now put dot dot, that's a lone pair representing these two electrons which that B has now got. We could say it's those two electrons there. Uh, and also notice the charges, A has become one more positive than it was before because previously it was sharing electrons and now it's completely lost them and uh, from the point of view of B it's now gained an electron it was sharing these two but now it has both of them completely. So uh, in the uh, a mechanism for this reaction we start off with uh, the alkene here remember we're reacting that with H uh, X here HBr we're going to add across and there's our final product now to start with the two electrons from the carbon carbon double bond uh, will move from where they are to make a new bond with the hydrogen atom in the HBr and once that hydrogen atom has been attacked by these two electrons here then the two electrons in the hydrogen bromine bond will be shunted on to bromine now as a result of this we have a new bond between this carbon and that hydrogen which is that line there uh, this bromine hydrogen bond has broken and bromine has now gained the two electrons and become an, gained its negative charge. Whereas this carbon here has lost uh, its bond. It's now only making three bonds and so that has a positive charge. So this is our intermediate and once we've reached the intermediate a second step occurs where the bromide ion, well its lone pair specifically moves to make a covalent bond with that uh, carbon which is only making three bonds and as a result of that we get the final CBr bond and there's the product. A couple of points I'd like to uh, make. Uh, first of all there were a couple of choices made here. Um, one of the choices was which direction to move the curly arrow on with respect to the HBr. You could imagine the electrons uh, moving on to H uh, not towards Br uh, as it was in the mechanism here it actually went the other way so the two electrons moved on to bromine and the reason for that is electronegativity the electronegativity of bromine is much higher than that of uh, hydrogen and so it will draw the electrons towards it more strongly than hydrogen will and we'll always see that with the halides because halides uh, halogen atoms are relatively uh, electronegative Okay, second point I'd like to make is about uh, this first curly arrow and the fact that the electrons came from the double bond. We might have imagined that the reaction could the other way round. So the HBr broke and then the bromide decided to attack this uh, alkene. Now the reason why that doesn't occur is because the alkene itself is electron rich. We've got four electrons in here and so that will actually repel any electrons coming in. So this here is, is quite unlikely to occur. Whereas uh, what does occur, what's more likely to occur, is that the electrons come originally from this alkene with the four electrons in there, and that's an electron-rich uh, uh, molecule. Okay, so here's a uh, multiple-choice question. One of these is correct. I need to be specific about charges and bonds and curly arrows and things like that. And uh, next we'll talk about Markovnikov's rule.